Hello and welcome to this unboxing and review of the Orion Starshoot 5MP Solar System Colour Camera. Now this camera is predominantly for lunar and planetary uh, observation and capturing of, uh, of images for stacking uh, your pictures on top of each other. Um, and it's quite good. 5 megapixel, as you can see from the box, it comes very well packed. Inside the box is another box. Now inside this box houses all of the bits and pieces that you need to get yourself started. So on opening it up, again, it's very well packed. On opening the box, you have your uh, instruction manual and this gives you a lowdown of the software uh, inside the box as well. There's your software, that's the uh, uh, Easy Planet Capture software. And you've got your cable, your nose piece and the camera itself. Very well packed. Now this system does work on a USB 2 uh, high-speed USB 2 so you will need a USB 2 uh, port on your PC or laptop to use it and some of the other good features of it it does have a, an IR uh, filter the analog to digital converter in it is 8-bit and as far as the specifications say it'll do 0 0.001 seconds to 6 second exposures um, something I've not able to be uh, not been able to do is yet the pixel size for this camera is 2.2 by 2.2 microns, um, so they're very, very small. Um, given that they're quite small, uh, it gives you the ability of binning. Uh, if you don't know what binning is, have a look on the internet. Um, and the binning sizes for that is 2 by 2 pixels, 4 by 4 pixels, 8 by 8 pixels, or 16 by 16 pixels. Now, it certainly feels very weighty in the hand at 170 grams. Um, it's very very stable here we can see a shot of the actual CMOS sensor itself and you can see it is actually quite big it does come with a little dust cover that you need to peel off very very carefully uh, before using the camera uh, but it does go through all this in the very good instruction manual that it comes with Right, okay, now we're going to have a look at the um, software that comes with the Starshoot camera. And this is uh, Easy Plan uh, Capture, um, which is Orion software. You get it on a CD, and this software will work from Windows XP all the way up to Windows 10. I'm currently testing it on Windows 10, so let's take a look at it. Okay, to start with, we have the menu on the right hand side and we'll go down all the settings and the bits and pieces as, as to what they are. Um, about button, self-explanatory. Uh, within the control box, we have a little pull-down menu that gives you all of the resolutions that the camera will capture at. So whether you're taking um, a single snapshot or image, whether you're stacking, um, whether you're uh, taking video or you know your AVI file um, to, uh, to stack in another program, then this is where you get your resolution from. The highest resolution that this will do is uh, 2592 by 1944 and that goes all the way down to uh, 160 by 120 and you get similar with um, you know 1280 by 960 down to 160 by 120 uh, and that's using the uh, the bin feature which as you may know is um, basically collating a couple of the pixels together um, but I'll talk about that more on another video so these are the resolutions um, that you have that you can use you can choose from um, the button here start camera uh, if you click that it will connect to the camera so it makes the camera live so you can actually turn the camera on and off um, then you've got all your your default and capture buttons stop capture um, if you're doing um, pictures your exposure level um, you can do that in minutes seconds and milliseconds um, I'm not sure why they put minutes and seconds in there because um, 
certainly I couldn't get it to do anything more than about 300 milliseconds. Um, anything more than that, then it wouldn't let you enter uh, into the uh, into the software. Um, and then a click button then to change the exposure. The little bar that you have here shows you the buffer. So if you are taking, uh, let's say 300 milliseconds, then that bar will go across very, very slowly. Whereas if you're taking two milliseconds, then it goes across quite quickly. Underneath that, you have the target uh, and auto exposure, the gain, and that's done in dB, um, your contrast and your gamma. Um, nice handy function is being able to flip the, uh, the camera horizontally and flip it vertically. Um, if the camera hasn't been put in the right way up or the right orientation, um, then you are able to, to move that about. Then we come on to the color settings. Color settings, uh, you can do one push white balance, which is great if you're using this camera for um, terrestrial viewing. So if you're taking pictures in the daytime of things further away, then the white balance works very, very well. Um, it doesn't work that well for planetary stuff. Um, I have to say, um, I've done a bit of video footage with the moon and using the uh, the one push white balance, it still went a bit bluey or a bit greeny. So um, it doesn't really work that well on, on planets, but it works fine on your terrestrial viewing. Again, here you're able to, ch uh, to change the, um, the gain of the red, the green and the blue. Coming down, you've got saturation and you can adjust the saturation um, manually or you can leave it as automatic. Um, if you tick the box, then you're able to use a little slider. If you untick it, then you can't. It's automatic. Um, you can also make it monochrome, so you can do away with all of the red, green, and blue, and um, you, know, you can just have it monochrome. Say you've got a, a filter, a red, green, and blue filter that you put on to do your different pictures, um, then you're able to do that with this software. The area of display, uh, that's basically our little live window that we have here. Um, it shows you whether you're gonna crop an area uh, whether you want it to be full screen and not have all of the menu on the right hand side um, or you can restore it back to um, the actual setting 640 by 480 or whatever your resolution is next one down is the sequence capture mode now you can stack with this particular program um, i've got to say i wasn't very successful using this uh, as a stacking or the stacking function on this um, software but it's there if you want to use it you can tell it how many frames that you want to do um, and there's a little change button next to that to to change how many frames that you you want to use next down is the um, the dark frame removal and this actually works quite well because if you turn the gain up you're going to get the sparklies um, sparklies are caused by the amplifier in the CMOS chip um, basically really really sensitive making it very very sensitive uh, and causing um, different colored weird blotches on the uh, on the screen. Now, the idea of, of this uh, dark frame removal is to remove that. Um, what you can do is you can say how many frames you want to, um, you know, to put in. The more frames, the better. Um, usually five or 10 would be enough. You can hit calculate, and then what it will do is it will look at the screen, it'll look at the gain, it will say, right, okay, I know that, um, everything that's on the screen at the moment is uh, basically amplifier noise. So I'm gonna take those particular pixels out. Um, and again, that works very, very well uh, if you have the gain up quite high. Uh, you can also set it for automatic gain, uh, sorry, automatic uh, dark frame removal. Um, and again, that works, but it's not quite as good as, as manually doing frames. The next, at the bottom here, there is a tab called picture. If we go over across to that, it gives you, uh, at the top of the menu here, it gives you the save file information. So what it will do is you can put your file names in. So say you want to call it something different, moon, Jupiter, whatever. Um, it will do that for you. The, the pictures, it will save in TIFF, obviously uncompressed. And then you've got your compressed formats like BMP and JPEG. The path that these are going to that's just a standard that it, it, it actually installs to. So you can change that, you can highlight that and you can change it or browse and change the, um, the location if you want it somewhere different. Uh, if you're like me and you have a separate hard disk for doing all of your capturing and your pictures, um, then obviously you can change that. That's a, a nice feature on this software. Next down is the video and you have the options to encode. That's obviously doing your pictures. 
uh, or record. Record will do the um, the AVI file, and it does record in uh, uncompressed AVI uh, format. Zoom again, self-explanatory. It will zoom um, the profile window or the the live view window that you have here. Uh, it will actually zoom in on the area of that. Then underneath you have your um, your stacking capture preview. So if you're going to encode, you can actually see all the frames and how they're uh, how they're looking. You can make them the pictures a bit larger, or just stick with the little tiny thumbnails that are there. That's basically the software, and of course you have the um, the capture or the, the live view window here, and that is um, that is pretty much the software. Now coming back to the uh, one of the downsides that I found with with this software um, is that I could only capture anything or have a live view at 640 by 480. It didn't matter what I did, even on a USB 3 uh, fast com uh, USB port, um, it would only let me capture at 640 by 480. Anything higher than that at 1280 by 960 or um, 2592 by 1944 it would not let me capture that I couldn't resolve a picture um, in the uh, in the live view window here um, at all so um, which was a bit of a shame so I could only capture uh, images at 640 by 480 which really and truly I wasn't getting my full 5 megapixel which the camera was initially bought for so which was a bit of a letdown um, all the other um, all the other uh, resolutions below that from 160, um, 120 up to 640 by 480, that worked fine, uh, no problem at all. But anything higher, uh, the top two here, I couldn't resolve an, an image at all on that. So that was obviously a fault. Um, we're not quite sure. Um, one of the other things to mention with this software is that um, unfortunately, uh, this is the only software that I was able to find that works with um, the Orion Starshoot. Um, sadly, it seems to be a proprietary system. Uh, in other words, you can only use this software to work with this camera. Now, there's lots of software available out there um, that I use with um, various other cameras that I have, um, with capture boards or webcams, um, and they work brilliantly. Uh, a lot of them are free, some of them you have to pay for, but they give you a lot more, uh, a lot more features in the software. You know, a lot more filters, a lot more features, um, and unfortunately, this is all that you have in this software. It's a bit of a letdown of the, uh, bit of a letdown of the camera, unfortunately. Um, so, that's basically the software, and I hope that's uh, given you a bit of a rundown of uh, of what to expect with the uh, Easy Plan Capture software. Okay, using the Easy Plan Cap software that comes with the Orion Starshoot 5MP, this is the footage that you will be expecting to get. I have to say I'm not impressed with the quality at all, and this was at uh, 640 by 480 um, dots per inch resolution. Right, this image here was from a 6 euro webcam, and again this was using 640 by 480 resolution with third party software. So it goes to show that the uh, the camera was was better, um, and the uh, the quality is uh, is a lot better as well.